Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Pat Chat Edition. I'm Violet. And I'm Pat. I want to welcome all my wellness warriors here today. As usual, we make videos to help people to understand the keto world, I guess, all the mm -hmm. information that's floating around out there so that we can have good information and really focus on our health. Patrick, mm -hmm. what do we have today? We have an article uh, talking about post keto. If for some reason you want to stop, you want to get out of the, the keto lifestyle, like first question is why would you do that? Let's review like all the effects and, and the whys and if they're so right or wrong. Okay, so basically what I'm understanding is it's, a, it's an article about post keto, yeah. but the idea being that when you finish, so you, there, that you can finish keto. Yeah. That's kind of the but, idea. But okay. like the title is what actually happens to your body when you stop the keto diet. Oh, okay. okay. So let's Okay, let's okay, that's that. a bit of a different. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 I thought it was more like ah, okay. encouraging people I should have to start with the title. I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, like I think that, like until now we made it clear that the keto and you made it clear that the keto is not a diet, like it's it's really a lifestyle. So, but maybe for some reason what would be the good reasons what would be a, a few good reasons why you would want to um get off the keto I feel like lifestyle? this is a trick question. No, it's not. Good reasons to stop <laughs> oh, good keto. Reason? There's uh, no, well, I don't know if there's a good oh, reason what to would stop be a keto. Reason, then, I too. think a reason you're tired of being healthy? <laughs> no, that's, that's no reason. <laughs> Okay, I, I can't think of a good reason. I mean, no. uh, you know, there there's reasons to not. No, I can't think of a good reason. I mean, we know that being in a ketogenic state is good for pregnancy. We know that it's that yes. children are babies are born in a keto, ketogenic state. You can we, get rid of your sugar addiction. That's another good, another good reason. To 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 be in it or to no, not no, be no, in I it. I do not mean it. No, I'm just like joking. Okay. Just like. I mean, I, I, I can't know. actually, I'm sitting here, I'm trying mm. to think of a good reason to stop doing keto. And I can't actually think of one. Mm. So uh, I, I would, uh, oh. I Let's say like, maybe like we, I think we met, we, we saw on YouTube, those, those, um, those people that are doing keto just to lose weight. But again, you made it clear that it shouldn't be your, your, your goal to do a keto lifestyle, but like. Well, but I feel so, I'm kind of interested to hear what this article yeah. has to say, because it seems like what they're trying to do is tell you if you stop doing keto, these bad things will happen, I think. But mm -hmm. we'll, we'll wait. I'm waiting to see how it it's actually more, turns out. It's more like when you start. OK, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Let's review all, the, okay. all those effects. I don't know. They're talking about like actually benefits of stopping keto. So like we know it's a it's a con keto article. But like anyway, let's let's just like talk about them. So by stopping your keto lifestyle, you're going to get better cholesterol level. My, based my, on what? Are based on what? But yeah, you you eat no, but based on the fact that you you eat less fatty food. Okay, so we've already food. it's already so, been established that eating yeah. a ketogenic lifestyle does not cause you to have poor cholesterol numbers. Yeah. So I'm not even sure based but, on what they're making that statement. Do they have any? I'm I'm asking this question like if I don't no, know the answer. Yeah. But is but, there any research to back up anything no, 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 that's in this no, article? No, not at all. Okay, at all. so they're just assuming it's actually like oh yeah, it's actually they're, no. they're assuming that mm -hmm. you have bad cholesterol numbers to begin with, because they're saying you're going to have better cholesterol numbers. They're, they're making the assumption assuming that on the keto lifestyle you're having, let's say you're having higher cholesterol level. It's already been shown that when you first begin a ketogenic lifestyle. And if you were to test your blood, yes, initially it looks like if you have more cholesterol floating around in the system, because you actually do by freeing up fatty acids to use as energy, you also free up cholesterol. However, our body loves homeostasis and there's a certain amount of cholesterol that we're supposed to have in our body. So even if I don't eat it, my body will create it because you need a certain amount of cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So we already know that all the cholesterol floating around in you is not from what you've eaten. So right away that, that first, mm. the, I, I probably, if it was me reading the article, I probably would have put it down. Mm. The, the first thing they're saying is, oh. is, is, it doesn't make sense. Or bring it to a patch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but because we're here to help you, yeah. we're gonna keep going through. But okay, so no. what's the next? No, the next. But even scary this, in, thing. in the same the same paragraph, and you may even sleep better because eating carbs at night usually leads to more restful sleep. Yeah, it's actually. I have no idea what they're basing black, that on. Black on white. No, because yeah, yeah. It's totally I, I've like never a free, heard any like, anything saying that fewer or fewer. or more carbs. So. Oh, maybe like a chocolate cookie and milk, like you sleep better. 
<laughs> I don't know. It's like uh, I'm late. I'm actually sitting here trying to think if I ever heard mm-hmm. anything about carbohydrates helping sleep. you to sleep or lack of carbohydrates resulting in not, sleeping. not sleeping. Most people who do a ketogenic lifestyle report better sleep. So like I'm trying mm-hmm. to understand where that would come from. Like you're going to eat carbs and sleep better? I mean, are they suggesting you're going to be in a sugar coma? I don't know. Maybe I'm like, I'm so, your, your, I'm so confused by fix. that. Like you, you want your carbs in, you eat your carbs. But if you're you just on like a ketogenic feel, lifestyle, you don't you have need, your dopamine hit. Being, but the thing like, is, if you're on a ketogenic lifestyle, you're not needing a fix mm. because you've taken yeah. care of your physical it's cravings, true. which is, so I, I'm confused by that one. Yeah. And again, <laughs> no research. So, okay. Grain okay. of salt. Grain of salt. Oh, they're all grain of salt, by the way. Second, like benefits of stopping the, the lifestyle, more muscle. So again, we already Based established. On, like, what's the yeah, sentence? <laughs> you're gonna like, have more again, muscle. Period. Like, yeah, you're gonna have more muscle. We already established that, like, your your protein is your pivot. Like, what you ate before and what you eat after keto shouldn't have changed. And you sh- you, sh- you have the same amount, basically the same amount of pro- of proteins. So, like, again, like it's a free. So, so get yeah, proteins. So basically, are, they're saying you're gonna have more. Well, they're right about proteins or the building blocks of your muscle. Yeah. But what they seems to 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 say is that like the keto lifestyle is higher in fat, so you have less proteins. Okay, so that's absolutely so false. That's false. Yeah. First of all, and and anybody who has been following my channel. Mm. I want to talk about the other channels because different people say different things. But I know myself, Dr. Barry, Dr. Westman, Dr. Berg, all of us. I'm trying to think of any other doctors that I could think of that talk about this topic, specifically what you're eating. We've all pointed out that when you eat a ketogenic lifestyle, it is not about diminishing the amount of protein that you eat. Mm. As a matter of fact, the healthy fat so the healthy ones that you're supposed to be eating is the fat that comes along with whatever mm. meat or protein source, because it could be fish, that you happen to be eating. So right away, this article, you could tell, is being written by someone who has no idea how to do the ketogenic lifestyle because they're making the assumption that your fat is not coming from protein. Mm-hmm. So if it's not coming from protein, they're assuming that all you're doing oh. is drinking MCT oil. That doesn't make any no, sense, no, no, no. right? That's not healthy. So... Even that, like you're not, if you are doing a well formulated ketogenic lifestyle, then you likely will in the long run have more muscle. Why? Hmm. And there's two, I don't know if this is going to come up later, but I'm going to say it now just because it's important to say now. Why? Because when you eat a well formulated ketogenic lifestyle, you naturally fall into, like I would say 99% of people, that's a bit high. I'll say 90% of people (laughs) fall into two meals a day. And as soon as you fall into two meals a day, if you allow yourself to do your workout fasted, you're building more muscle than Mm -hmm. any of those people in the gym. Because when you're fasted, there's more growth hormone floating around in your blood and your body. And that is what causes you to be able to build good muscle. Mm -hmm. So all these people that are talking about, you know, eat carbs and they're mistakenly seeing Mm -hmm. carbohydrates because our body uses them first. They're mistakenly believing that that's the energy you need to build muscle. And that's not why your body uses them first. It uses it first because it's toxic and it needs to get it the Mm. heck out of there. Whether it burns it or whether it stores it as fat, it needs to get it the heck out of there. So I hope that I just answered Mm. that one because, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going to be exhausted by the end of this article. (laughs) And their hints for, for like the, their more muscle benefits is gradually replace the higher fat proteins you've been consuming with lean proteins. But at the same time, like like you, the the amount of protein won't change. Like you you like you said, you just like need to eat like so the what high happens? quality meat with with like the fatty cuts. Hold on. So everyone so. everyone who's doing a ketogenic lifestyle, I want you to think about something for a second. Yeah, what happens when you eat lean protein and your energy source is carbs? Like you use your That's carbs a low as fat you diet. Yeah. What happens yeah. when you do a low fat diet? You gain weight. weight. So basically, mm-hmm. what this article is actually suggesting is now that you've been able to get yourself mm-hmm. to a good weight, let's go back and build some fat. Like, let's put the fat back mm-hmm. on. So it's really encouraging yo-yo dieting, mm-hmm. which I've mentioned so many times is the most unhealthy thing that we've been doing. Mm-hmm. Because every time you go up and down, you end up at a higher weight than you started at. So you go down and then you end up five pounds more. And then you go down and you end up five pounds more. And if you keep doing that long enough, guess what happens? 20, 20, 30 pounds later, Mm -hmm. on top of what you started trying to lose. 
Yeah. I'm really disliking this article so far. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, uh, we're, we're two there's points more. in. There's more. There's more. Uh, by stopping a keto lifestyle, you'll have better energy. So like I already what answered they say, that question. Yeah. So this is especially true since carbs are necessary to renew or repair muscles. If your body needs carbs, it's going to make it. Like, yeah. I think we could just like sum it up like with that. Like um, th this is this is exactly what I just said. They actually are yeah. believing that carbs are better energy source yes, than yeah. fats, and it's not true. And this is perpetuating mm. the idea. And I, I, I'm sure if we do, took a little bit of a deep dive into this article, you're going to find some kind of grain company or some kind of sugar company at the back of this article because no, I'm going to all you of at this, the end. okay, <laughs> so all of this is, is just okay making me cringe so by okay another another one uh, by reintroducing carbs into your your diet you end up with more anti-inflammatory tools so basically you re you reincorporate fruits grains which is like you know according to them uh, okay let's i'm gonna read it eating more vegetable and fruit can reduce inflammatory markers in the body and reducing inflammation is key for reducing disease risk but like, what is the number one cause of inflammation? Carbs. Carbohydrates. <laughs> so basically they're saying eat sugar so mm. that you can try to pull some inflammatory markers out of the fruit that you're eating. Um, plants don't want to be eaten. Mm. So when you eat plants, they actually put other things in there that cause inflammation. So, you know, again, it's telling mm -hmm. you to reintroduce fruits and vegetables, which is going to create more inflammation in your body and then those little bit of anti-inflammatory anything if you can find them in the plants that you know if you eat the right plant and you find it but if you think about it if i wasn't eating the plants to begin with because they're trying to protect themselves with toxins mm. that's what those lectins are then I, if i wasn't eating these i wouldn't need the anti inflammatory it's, it's a it's, circle yeah. that we don't understand that we're on you know there's a reason why when a dog eats a certain plant and it throws up, it doesn't ever touch that plant again. But us mm. humans are so stubborn <laughs> that we can know that, hey, plants don't want to be eaten. They're putting lectins in the food to make us sick. We can live with all this inflammation in us, but still try to figure out a way to trick that plant into us. Mm. You cannot change the way your body reacts mm. to food. If it's toxic, it's toxic. Yeah. Please, I'm begging you. Don't follow these kind of articles where they're putting you back to be in a bad place. Yes, yeah. Because honestly, I'm I'm waiting to hear that this is from some, some kind of drug company or something. And they're just trying to sell you something mm. to ease your inflammation. Is it going to be, I'm not going to name any brands, but oh my goodness. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. But I wanted to add that it's been proven like until now that on a keto lifestyle, we have much less inflammation to start with. So you don't need the anti-inflammatory tools that they are referring to. Honestly, and you're a perfect, exa perfect example. I'm a perfect <laughs> example of that because <laughs> honestly, I have so much mm. less inflammation. Like this past summer has been the best summer I've mm. ever lived in the last, I would say, 20-ish years. Because every time I wanted to go do something, I actually could. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to this coming winter when I can just like decide to go ski or snowboard or whatever I feel like doing. And I actually can or tobogganing or whatever it happens to be. Because that's the cool thing about not being inflamed all the mm. time. When you want to do something, it's really a matter of, do I feel like it, mm -hmm. right? And I, I really feel like the person who's writing this article is coming from a place of still living all their inflammation and not realizing that they could be doing so much better. Yeah. Better gut health, so higher carb, more fiber. Like I, we were gonna cover fibers, like in the in the next uh, in the next video, like both of us, but like more fiber. So. What so this the... idea that you need fiber to yeah, so go from to the grain. washroom and that yeah. your gut health will be better if you have fiber. Yeah. And the thing that I will point out is that your gut, first of all, your gut health is dependent on what dependent on whatever you happen to be eating at the time. Mm. So if I'm eating certain types of vegetables, my gut will be used to processing those certain kinds of vegetables. It's part of the reason that I do encourage people that, so whatever you're eating, whether you're eating vegetables or not. I am assuming all my wellness warriors are not eating fruit. So mm. whatever types of vegetables you're eating, I encourage you to choose different ones and play around with them. Why? Because the more varied what you're eating is, then the better you're able to understand how things are affecting you, right? So if I allow myself for a little while to eat something and then I change, and I eat something else, you kind of get to feel like I did about learning that, oh, okay, whenever I introduce a nightshade, hmm, I didn't feel so great. Right. Whether it was a potato, whether it was a bell pepper, like they seem to affect me a certain way. 
So the best way to learn that is allowing yourself to have variety because that's how you're going to know. The other thing is that if you are able to eat them by having variety, you don't get into the habit of having just the one kind of food, which means now I'm limited that my gut is only used mm -hmm. to eating these four kind of vegetables. When I eat something that's different, of course, I'm not going to feel great. I don't have the flora in my intestines to manage. So the bacteria in my intestine to manage what I need to, to, to um, metabolize that food, right? Does that mean that I need to eat those things to go to the bathroom? No, no. What's the other great thing that makes you go to the bathroom? Fat. Fat. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm already eating mm. fat. I'm already going to be going to the bathroom. I don't need extra mm. fiber to go to the bathroom. I really should choose my article better because I'm making you all upset. <laughs> so weight stability. Yeah, that, that's I'm nice. excited to hear so, what this one is. Due, okay, due to the slashing of calories and the lack of hunger that comes with a high fat diet, the slashing of calories, like they don't know that fat has a higher calorie count per grams than like carbs, a keto diet can end up being very low in calories. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I, mean, I read that I was like, oh, seriously, like. Seriously? And, okay, hold on, let's pause for one second. And, 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 and not only that, like a very low calorie diet equals weight loss. So to them, like on the keto lifestyle, we end up losing weight because we eat fewer calories. First of all, everybody oh, who's yeah. watching this video that knows me knows that I say ignore mm. the calorie count, not because it's low, because it doesn't matter. Because in truth, when you see how many calories you're actually mm -hmm. eating, most people get scared and want to cut it. Mm -hmm. And True. so I tell people, don't even pay attention to the calorie count because it's going to scare you away from actually just eating to satiation. Mm. So as a test, because I'm on maintenance. How many calories do you think I typically eat in a day? No, you let me count. You probably, I would say maybe 2,500. How much? 2,500. Close, 22, 22, 23. Okay. Now, when I was doing standard American diet and trying to be good, right? When I would only yeah. eat what I'm supposed to eat, I know that my calorie count would come oh. in under, like well under two, like maybe 1,600 16, calories. 14, yeah, that was... I'm almost 1,000 calories. Oh, I remember more. seeing you like try to get to 1,400 or something like that. I only know this because I was tracking all my food, right? And when I went back and looked at it from years ago, because I'm using the same tracker, I realized like I was at 1,500, 1,600, you know, ish calories for a day, mm. eating three times a day. Eating three times yeah. a day. So it's crazy. But like, I eat so many more calories now, mm -hmm. calories, right? And way less. Yeah. And you're stable. Calorie, and I'm, sta and I'm stable. stable. I'm answering to the second part that I said that you lose weight because you've lowered your calories. And that That's is not why true. you're losing weight. You are losing weight because carbohydrates floating around mm -hmm. in the blood is toxic. Mm -hmm. If you have too many carbohydrates floating around your, in your blood, you have a condition known as diabetes. And when you have that the condition, it will eventually kill you if untreated. Your body works really hard before you become diabetic, trying to keep that number around five. So guess what happens when you get over five? You start taking medication to try to keep it around five. And how's our body trying to keep it around five? St safely storing it in fat. Because it's safer for you to be obese than it is for you to have sugar floating around in your if people don't understand this we're going to keep making mistakes keep making mistakes mm -hmm. keep making mistakes and believe and, articles like and this publishing articles like that and yeah. publish articles like this yeah right because that is not what causes you to lose weight on a ketogenic lifestyle that your calories are low because most people your calories are high mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because your carbs are low that's the dangerous thing and i'm not saying so before people start saying i can eat as much fat as i want no i'm not saying yeah, that yeah. If you eat excess of anything, you will gain weight. Mm. What I'm saying is if you eat to satiation, so not till fullness, till satiation, which is what I do, then you're probably going to be high on your calories, but still lose weight. Mm. So that like article was published, um, I'm so uh, curious. published on the food network, probably website by a registered dietitian. Oh, wow. Is it, <laughs> you know, I, 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 would, I don't want to know what her name is, but I'm just, or his mm, name is, but I'm no. just saying like, you know what, this is what scares yeah. me. I have so many yeah. people who 
who when I'm talking to them, they're like, okay, so where can I get somebody to help me with this? Can I talk to a, a dietitian? And like, I'm so cringe because mm -hmm. yeah, the dietitian is going to tell you the opposite of everything I'm telling yeah, you yeah. because they're f focusing on what they've learned how many years ago. And you know what scares me is that I I feel like, and I don't think it's because they don't want you to do well. I think it's just that they don't know. I, I really have a hard time believing that there's people in the know that are still giving the bad information. Mm. I know it's possible, but I really want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt yeah. that if they knew what they were telling you to do wasn't going to work, they would stop telling you that because there's always another client, right? I don't have to keep you in a bad situation to keep taking money from you. There's always another client. If I help you really well, I'll probably get seven of your friends. So I don't believe in that. I don't believe that it's like wickedness. Mm -hmm. I really think it's that they don't know and they're so afraid to try that they're willing to keep giving this bad advice that doesn't work because everything that's written there, if that person happened to be overweight and tried to do what they're talking about, doesn't yeah. work. Not at all. So again, like be careful what you read, like on the web, uh, may <laughs> go, go get your information and like the, the, the whole thing, because like stuff like that, it's kind of, yeah. And you have to do research, right? Like, I mean, I think everybody needs to be responsible. Do your research. It's not because you see something that, you know, one of the things I have to say is that when you see something that's falling in line with what you want to do, even if it's not healthy, you might want to go there because, well, it's telling me this is okay, mm. but yeah. you have to think short term, long term, mm. because in this moment, you're getting to have flavors that you like, but long term, am I going to be as healthy as I could be? And I want everyone to kind of focus on being as healthy as you could be long term. So that flavor that you get to play with right now, is it really worth minusing five years off your life possibly? Or, and I don't mean by death, because it might not be by death, but it might be five years that you could have been running around with a healthy body that you're not as healthy as you could have been. You can't do the activities that you would have been, like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the cool things I'll say is that some of the people in my, like some of the older people that I knew who still were active, so they never stopped working out. And it was amazing to me how till their dying day, they were running around in the backyard doing their garden, doing their whatever. And I think that's pretty cool. I want to be that. And I'm encouraging all of you to be that. So we have another piece of the puzzle because they knew you had to keep moving, right? There's another piece of the puzzle. You have to eat properly. So I want to thank everyone for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet Patch Hat Edition. You know, all my wellness warriors, I love that you guys come by every week. Everybody who's new, subscribe, ring the bell, do the things, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I want everyone to know that if you enjoy this kind of content that Patrick and I do, there's a Patreon account. It's Patreon slash Violet Rivera. All the information is there if you decide to contribute to the production of some of these videos. Um, and, you know, it's a valuable content that I do want all of you sharing out to people that you know. You know, it doesn't. it's not about being overweight. And so that's why I want you to share it out. It's not about being overweight. It's about being healthy. You might have thin friends that are eating a standard American diet that guess what? They might be diabetic. They might have heart things. Mm -hmm. They might have things that they could be solving pre-diabetic that, you know, that they could be solving. Inflammation issues, joint issues. How many of my friends have joint issues? Mm -hmm. Right? So share out the videos for that reason. Help your fellow people. Right? It's important for us to, it, it costs nothing to share it out. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you for watching. I love making these videos for you guys. And see you next week. See you next week.